As a chiropractor, I've seen miraculous healing take place. Some might consider these stories to be miracles. Others realize that the miracle is in all of us. The ability for the body to heal itself is fully realized when subluxation is removed. There are those miracles, however, that affect us personally and reaffirm why we believe so strongly in the adjustment. This is why as chiropractors we have such a passion for what we do. And with your help, we want to tell the world the story of chiropractic. Dr. Gilles Lamarche has just such a story involving his son Christopher. But he's the one that should share it, not I. So let me introduce Dr. Gilles Lamarche. I'm here to share a true life healing story of my son Christopher. I'd like you to reflect on where you might have been on July 1st, 1999. Well, most of you are saying, Jill, that's crazy. I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. How could, how could I remember where I was on July 1st, 1999? For me, that's a very significant date. It's the date that Christopher and I and his friend Matthew were at our lake house. And it was, you know, the night was running on and I was tired. I wanted to go to sleep. And so I basically told the boys that the rules, make sure you put the fire out, you know, stay off the lake, etc. What a good parent would do. And I went to bed. And as I normally say, I'm the type of guy who reaches over, turns the light off, and I fall asleep before the room gets dark. So I automatically went into sleep. And shortly thereafter, I was awakened. Boom, boom. And I woke up just long enough to say, oh my gosh, they must have taken some of the fireworks for tomorrow's Canada Day party. And I went right back to sleep. As my neighbor would later tell me, about 20 seconds later, there was a third boom. And it's not the boom that woke me up, but it was the sound of my son's voice screaming, help, I can't see. You got the picture? That's the picture that I got. And I jumped out of bed and I ran to the lakefront, 88 steps from the top down to the bottom to see Christopher standing there just frozen with flames still coming off his face. I grabbed him by the seat of his pants and scruffed his neck. I dumped him in the water. How a little guy like me does that, I don't know, but that's what I did. And I carried him up, rushed him to the hospital after wrapping his face in ice to find out that Christopher was blind in both eyes. He had second and third degree burns through more than 50% of his face. You see, he had bent over to pick up the cartridge, which he had read had only two blasts, but unfortunately there was a third one. And when he bent over to dip it into the water, the third blast, him in the face, through his nose, actually burnt even his soft palate into his sinuses, no eyelashes left, no eyebrows left, and his nose crispy black like a hot dog that you might have cooked on a campfire. What Christopher asked for when I first got to the hospital was three things. First he asked for his brother and sister, obviously good support. Next he asked for a shot of Demerol. He didn't call it Demerol but he just said, hey daddy can you ask him to give me what they gave me when they fixed my fractured arm that I broke last winter. He had broken his arm playing hockey. My children were raised in a chiropractic lifestyle. My kids had never had a needle, lotion, or potion put into their body. But let me tell you, when you need something to kill the pain, Demerol works, and I authorize that. The third thing that he asked me was an adjustment. Well, as a chiropractor for years already, I had not even thought of checking his spine, but I did, and I adjusted him. We met with the doctor, found out that his eyeballs were burnt 50% into the vitreous. That means 50% of his eyeball was completely burnt and that he would likely be blind for the rest of his life. In making that discussion with the doctor, I said, you know, what do we do next? And so we decided to fly him to Toronto, went to Sick Children's Hospital, and saw two ophthalmologists, saw three plastic surgeons, to find out that he would likely be blind in both eyes for the rest of his life. And from the plastic surgeons that, you know, he, had, he was young, he had nice skin, he would probably recover well after two or three plastic surgeries. But the plastic surgeon said to me, you know, please don't travel with him, but we don't want to keep him in the hospital. This is where all the bugs live. And the worst thing that can happen to a burn victim is that they get an infection. If he gets an infection, it'll cause scarring. If it causes scarring, it'll make it much more difficult for us to do our plastic surgical work. And so I agreed, took my son out of the hospital, checked into a wonderful hotel in Toronto. And the first thing that I did is I untucked the blankets at the foot of the bed and I tucked in at the headboard and, you know, put my son in this way. He was heavily medicated, he was sleeping 18 hours or more every single day since, that, since the injury and continued to do so. But as a parent, I mean he's my baby and even though he was 14 years old, he was still my baby and every time he moaned or groaned, I would be right by his side. And I constantly checked his upper cervical spine. The first bone, right below the skull, 
where the spinal cord exits or the brainstem exits and becomes a spinal cord because I knew that if we could keep that area free, it was more likely that his immune system would work well and it would make his surgeries a lot easier. On Wednesday, he wakes up and he says to me, Dad, are you wearing a blue shirt? And I was. I said, why? He said, well, because before, every time I opened my eyes, it was like, it was just black. And now there seems to be color and it looks like blue. And what's interesting is that that night, he actually watched a movie and could tell me everything he saw on the screen. Not what he heard, everything he saw on the screen. Even being a chiropractor for two decades at the time, I was in awe that it was even possible my son had gotten his sight back. I continued to adjust him. We went back to the hospital on the Monday, saw the same two ophthalmologists to find out that Christopher had 20-20 vision. It was a miracle, or so they said. We then saw the three plastic surgeons, and I remember the female plastic surgeon walking in and looking at him, she went, oh my God, what have you done to him? Look, he's got perfect epithelial cells growing, and she's calling in you know, her team and said, look at this, he's not gonna need any surgery. Some may say that this was a miracle. I would tell you that I, my understanding with my three decades now of being a chiropractor is that the trueness of the fact that the power that made the body heals the body has never been more certain. My goal in adjusting Christopher was to maintain normal nerve function in the hope that he wouldn't get an infection, in the hope that his immune system would function as it should and he wouldn't have major problems having his surgeries. What we discovered, obviously, was something completely different. And so I would tell you that even though I have a belief in, you know, a greater spirit, I have a belief in God, I would tell you that it's, this is not a miracle. The miracle of health and healing is inside each and every one of us. That's the miracle. That's the power that made the body heals the body, and that's what we refer to. And so have no doubt that the human body can heal any condition. There is no condition known to man that has not at some point actually been healed in another human being. Obviously, there may be roadblocks along the way, but my suggestion to everyone I speak with is listen to a story such as Christopher's. Make a decision to make sure that you have your spine checked on a regular basis, that it functions at its optimum, so that your nervous system can function the way it was meant to function, and health and healing takes place. This is a true story. I share it with you from my heart to yours because I'm passionate about people understanding the value that chiropractic can bring to your life. Mm -hmm.